Hello guys, welcome to this video and I'm just showing you what I did. So basically it took me a while and now what I did basically just you know I created a new div uh, after the our uh, thumbnail image div uh, our thumbnail image I called it the name of mid screen icons and I gave it the padding on the x is two and I added two these inside this one with the class name of mid screen pause and another one with the class name of mid screen play. I gave them both of them an uh, icon one I gave an icon for pause for the pause with the name of uh, mid screen pause div name and another one for play. And I have the class name as text white so the icons will look white in the color. So basically in the global CSS what is happening we have a mid screen icons and this uh, little bit of code in here you can see this little bit of code is just you know to center this thing. Like I said, it, it, it has to have a position of absolute. It is going to get centered in the middle of our video. So, why, why top 45% because we have uh, our toolbar in the middle. So, I want this thing to be centered after, you know, ignoring our toolbar. So, we have that thing. And then I called it, I gave it a little bit of background color of a little bit silverish color. So, I told it to be a little bit of, you know, dull in color. So, it's going to have a background that like that. And I gave it a back, you know, border radius of 5 frame, so it is going to be a little bit of circle in the middle of the screen. And uh, I told transform of scale 5. So what exactly does transform scale 5 do? It is just you know basically whatever we have, including this div and whatever we have inside the div, it just increase you know increase all of their height and width by 4, multiply by 4 like that. And then we gave it a height of auto. It doesn't really matter against it. Okay, then we have for the both mid and mid screen pause and mid screen play. For both of them, I give the width of zero. As by default, I don't want to uh, see them. You know, once the video stop playing, stuff like that. I gave them a width of zero and height of zero. And I told my I told that overflow should be hidden by default, and uh, visibility should be hidden. I cannot. I, I would have just said you know display uh, none, but you cannot actually you know. And you, you cannot do display none while having animations in it. So here I can do display none, but I want to use I wanted to use CSS to you know hide my icon of two two uh, two hundred milliseconds. So I cannot just say display none of two hundred milliseconds. I need to say these kind of properties. That's why I defined them. I said transform scale should be zero by default, and uh, we have a transition on this transform transform for one fifty milliseconds. So is this going to be what like once this once we give it some height and stuff like that, we give we will just say scale is going to be one. It's not just going to directly going to become one. It's just going to have a little bit of transition. It's going to you know, go from zero to one, like zero to one, two, three, five, six, nine, ten, until uh one. So something like that. Not actually one to three, four, I'm like point point one point one two one four point five and then one. So that's what transition does. And then we have for both of them for our video container dot pause. So basically what we're saying now, if our video container contains the class pause. Then I want to show my mid screen pause logo, pause icon. But it's gonna have a few animations here, which we will make sure of 200 milliseconds it is going to hide. So we're just saying now here, width is going to be auto, height is going to be auto, or flow is going to be visible, visibility is just going to be visible, the logo is going to be visible itself. And the transform, we'll just say it for the transform section, we scale it up to one, which means it should be now visible completely. When we say scale one, and then it's gonna have a transition stuff like that. And these, so basically, this is just one line of uh, you know code. So basically, we're just having here this animation with it. We're just making a new animation with the name of CSS animation. It is going to start from zero milliseconds and it's going to like ease in uh, till two hundred milliseconds and forwards. Only that. And we, what we are doing here, like a lot of these stuff, we just know for making sure that this animation supports all the browsers like Opera, Firefox, stuff like that. I actually got the code from Stack Overflow, but not lie to you guys. So yeah, so this this I got this animation code from this Stack Overflow to hide a div after a fixed amount of time. So I just said 200 milliseconds is my time, and then I need to hide it after 200 milliseconds. So that's what it's doing right now. And then I did the same thing for the mid screen play icon. If it's not if our video does not contain the pause icon, what I want to do, I want to show my play icon. Okay, just like that. And it's, gonna, it's just gonna show us play icon for 200 milliseconds, and then it's just gonna go. And then we have this keyframe, basically just like one thing. I uh, uh, I told you I copied this from <laughs> Stack Overflow, 
So I think they had this WebKit keyframe to just make sure it supports all the browsers. Otherwise, this only thing thing should be working fine. This is the our animation name, and two, it just being like you know, what do you want to do after do and in milliseconds? I want to have my bit zero, I zero or plus zero, visibility zero, hidden and transform scale zero. Basically, you're like whatever it was as in default, right? Here is whatever we had it as we have whatever we had as default. So adding these little things, and we want to make sure that once we start the video. I want to remove the paused system. I refresh here. You can see the video will start playing by default. It should start playing by default. Okay, so to make sure the video start playing by default, what do we have to say? We remove the pause thing. We need to hear say auto play. Now the video should start playing by itself. Alrighty, it's not playing. Give me a moment, okay? Alrighty, guys. So the actual actual bug was, you know, one we we just having this on play thing. Okay. If I get rid of it, I refresh my video. It's, it's gonna play fine. And if I just keep it there, I refresh my video. I do this. It's not going to be played, okay? So to fix this thing, what we have to do, we need to have, uh, like, we have a toggle video pause, we'll have a toggle video play function. One second, my dad is calling. Okay, so what we're going to do now, toggle video play, right? I want to go a little bit up on the video playing section. It was timeline, it was playback, and... Uh, Duration management is it work with it? Toggle video pause, constant toggle video play function. So we're just gonna basically make sure first of all. So video play function, we need to make sure that uh, what what we're doing. We're just saying remove dot pause when we toggle this on play. And uh, remove. I mean, yeah, we're just gonna remove it. I do a refresh. You can see the video plays automatically. I do a refresh. So first, they show us that play thing. And uh, is it how YouTube does it? No. So basically, we don't want to see this play button, like play thing, when we get started. So we'll just say, if there is no pause, then show this play button, right? Mid screen play. Just copy this thing come back here or I can just have a ref thing going on I mean it's not the best choice that you can make but well is it it is what it is so what we're gonna do right now I'm just gonna say wherever there's a play I can say ref okay a ref is going to be equal to my mid play btn Go all the way up. Constant mid play button is going to be equal to our use ref. Let's copy the mid play BD and I will, I will go a little bit down. The down we go, the further more we move into our video play button section. Dot current dot style that dot transform is going to be equal to. Scale zero.
We do a counter play. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? Some errors coming up. Not really. Animation should be listed after all animation. Okay, well that's an issue if you consider it. Document must have a title to aid in navigation. Yeah, it doesn't have a title for now, so. WebKit text size adjust the support vector add to support Chrome 54 plus. Where do I even have this thing? I don't know. HTML WebKit text size 100% adjust. I guess this is not that we are doing it. Okay, let's go to index of JSX. Do we have an autoplay function? Yes, sir, we do have an autoplay function. Toggle video play. Okay, we have a custom function video play. It's gonna do its work. How about I just say stop current dot play function? Okay, there are some bugs, so we'll come, I will try to fix them once again. Alright guys, so instead of having your autoplay function on the video, what we can do instead, I just got rid of this thing. Okay, we had a... Okay, I added another thing, I added on double click, it should toggle as full screen mode, just like you do. Huh? Ah! Just like that. Now if you go a little bit upside. Where we are having our on click function. Video pause. Yeah. It's like the what fun what we wanted to do before. Now we're gonna say first of all uh, constant toggle video play is this going to be a function that's gonna do this thing for us and we're gonna say Video container dot current dot. Not actually video container and say. Okay, we created a ref with this thing before. Mid play icon. Uh, constant mid play icon is going to be equal to this ref. And all I'm gonna say here is just like mid play dot current dot style dot transform is going to be equal to scale zero and at the end video dot current dot play and I'm gonna call this instead of a user field hook.
Okay, we do a refresh. Nope, it's not playing. We also remove the pause thing from here. So I want to say probably we do a current dot add event listener on. Toggle video play. Okay. I guess that's even right. Not sure though. Oh, it's going to be played only once. Oh, the thing is ready. We don't want to do this. Accept and play failed because user didn't interact with the document first. Oh, you gotta interact with this document first. I'll see about this thing here in a minute. Okay, so basically, it doesn't, the browser doesn't let us, you know, run a video with the audio when we do it. So I need to add the muted uh, option here. We need to say on play is equal to double video play. That thing is working pretty fine. And we want to make sure this video is not muted when we play it, actually. I'm just going to play it and then I want to say run dot. It's called false. Was paused because the user didn't interact with the document first. Unmuting failed and the element was paused because the user didn't interact with the document first. So you gotta first interact and then we can let him pause or you know actually unmute the video. So I'll let you do another stack or post search. <laughs> yeah, that's where I get all these crazy ideas from. Yeah, we'll come back in a minute. So basically, we will not be having autoplay function enabled because there's no other way. Exactly, we cannot do this thing. That's the thing, we cannot do it. Okay? So we're just gonna get rid of these things. I'm just gonna have here my class be removed so I can just go all the way back to where we came from. The good though, they just wanna fly away. Mama says everything is going to be alright. No audible function, but we're going to have our own double click. Have this function, the toggle full screen mode. And what we exactly we want to do, we we want to do, is we have a paused class here. So if I refresh my video, I get some. I don't. Basically, I didn't want to have to actually see this. You know, pause the things when we actually see the video. So maybe by the public having this positive thing going on right there. Mm -mm, I don't really much think of a solution for now, to be honest. And this onload function will never be called. I told you that. Get my name written huh? <laughs>so we're gonna add another option here we like once we forward it back with the video it does doesn't show us what we are doing but we are Easter 
somebody who wants to know every single thing what is happening there. <laughs> so this, this is about the mid-screen options and I'm gonna have another div for the side screen options here we're gonna have like kinda like the same thing uh forward video backward video just like that icon is going to be Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Do I have to find the icon now? Forward. Pa forward. Pa backward. And uh, what is going on here? We have these options right there. Nice. Now all I have to do is just say copy this thing and make sh when you just go back here because we want to use the same CSS and stuff like that on them. Position absolute and left and top is going to be 45% so they get kind of like a center like this nice we have a just a flex justify content space evenly guess they don't care I will see about that thing also. Maybe we can have a gap in here. kind of like the same situation now the gaps actually will uh, take some space good space I'm gonna say okay this is not going to have any forward color why can't I just have you know just we cannot just use we cannot just use, just use the just of a content stuff content uh center no center space around display flex It doesn't really matter to this thing. What I wanted exactly is just oh I get I get it. Width needs to be hundred percent. Well that just a lot for this guy to take. These are the guys, culprits. We'll call them. Well, they just disappear.
maybe not let's not do a transform for now just for now we want to say just for content is going to be centered not exactly centered I just want to space Emily okay that's something I was looking for so now we can say dot size screen afterwards the do we have I want to have a transform thing going on okay Guess what? I messed up. I need to say width is going to be hundred percent, and yeah, that's what I want. Exactly. Let's copy my div color. Paste here. Copy my border radius. Node in here. Okay, going to have a little bit of padding on the x axis for both of them. So we'll say, yeah, it's like the backward and middle way. We're going to say the x is 22. Maybe one. Maybe one, yeah. I guess one is pretty much okay. All right, now here is a little bit of complications. So, what I want to do is basically, um, I want to add how can I actually detect how can I actually call out, call this thing maybe I'll just say yeah one second so I'm just copy did it did it The, all these things inside of a div okay no 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 I'm just copying the wrong one I need to set up this thing first of all Going to be for backward video and forward video. For both of them, it's going to be like that. And uh, what I want to do when we actually, you know, just copy these small animations, maybe. Not sure. Let's do a document dot query selector back for video dot style dot dot style dot Or it doesn't really matter. It doesn't even call anything, right? Damn right. So how I call these things? Da 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 da
thing going on other than just having this function itself. So a display is going to be none. And then we have these options for the transformation. I guess they both are the same things. Yep, skill zero. Style dot transform is going to be equal to scale one. Actually, nothing shows up. I'll be honest with you. Backward video. It's just not showing up, is it? Nope, it's not. Ah, why do I have to say these things? Just like we're defining it. Okay. It just goes away. It shows up and goes away. Well, so what are we going to do to keep it there? Maybe. By default, the display is going to be none. Ref is equal to backward video. Going to be easy to call the user ref. Then we have the backward video thing, right? So whenever we're just calling these mouse event stuff like that, I wanna do what? I would say. I'm not sure though, to be honest, I'm not sure. Style so so It's going to be equal to block. It, it only gets called for the first time. Yeah, because it's displayed just being like block maybe. I don't know what I'm even saying. Play the video. Okay. Nope, display none is not something that we have. We need going. We're going to do. No, display none at least. <coughs> we can do something like if our video container dot forward property is there, I want to say dot forward video should have by default it's going to get these things. From our friends, it's going to get those things as by default. And when it's being called, we're going to do those things. 
transmit is going to be zero. Okay, then what do we call this? When I say what is going to be this, transform scale to four, visibility is going to be visible. If not, then I want. Okay, I don't have to actually say not thing, right? Backward, because here we're already saying this thing scale should be zero. Once we do, it, we're done with this thing. Backward gets the same thing. Now we need to see how we're gonna call them. So I need to add a new class to the video container. Once say video container dot current class list dot add uh, <coughs> forward say so I set timeout of one many seconds dot remove forward maybe we do same thing for our backward thing Late forward, backward, forward, backward. Let's get rid of these things for now. We want to see what's going to happen. Okay, we don't get to see the forward backward thing actually. I mean, the icons. We don't. Let me just think about this thing. Alrighty, guys, I found the bug. The bug was basically we're just, you know, giving the animation inside the forward or backward video itself, but we don't have to do that. We have to give it the animation inside either once the class is forward or once the class is backward. With that being said, we're just doing like at a backward. And here, and then remove the backward. Maybe I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Not refresh. Let me say. So this, they're just removing the backward thing that much faster that it doesn't even notice that, right? So let's try out this thing. Yeah, tool number two is working pretty fine. Maybe we say remove it after. 10 milliseconds, but not immediately, right? Oh no, 10 milliseconds is not, it's not just giving, the, it giving, it, giving it the time. So, same goes for the forward thing. And let's see what's the result. Well, 200 milliseconds is quite a fast time. I mean, of course it is. <laughs> Sorry for that much of a, you know. Noise, but I'm trying to figure out something. I'm saying set timeout to remove the backward option afterwards because we don't want it to keep it there. We don't want it to be there, right? Or we can do one other thing. They copy this thing. As I call this thing, I want to say remove my 
backward option remove my forward option if there was any and then move ahead we'll just do the same thing for here and they will only work only if we keep calling one thing again again but let's suppose I'm calling this backward option it will first remove the thing and then try to add it again but it took a little bit of while so it didn't add it in successfully <laughs> well these things are targeting me man if I tell if I will here say class list or toggle the backward then what's gonna happen basically just gonna do the kind of like the same actions other than that it's gonna you know keep the options there it's not going to keep adding them or removing them but instead I'm just show you what it, it's going to do it's gonna show us forward I have forward again it's not going to show us forward because once we make another forward request it actually did what it actually removed our old forward and then it added a new forward in here that's what it did now if I have a two forward tokens what gonna happen then? It's gonna do nothing because we make a uh, two forward request at a time. We'll say first we'll toggle on and then off, then on and then off, on and then off. It's basically going to go round and round and round and round. So well, this there is a problem everywhere, right? I mean, we cannot really much fix every single thing we want. Our last solution that we found is us having a timeout. Of around 200 milliseconds, that is our initial animation loading speed. So we're assuming the user doesn't want the animation to be faster than that. Based on that assumption, we're just moving add with 100 milliseconds. Just want to take a look at how it looks like with 100. Can't even see it, man. One hundred is just triggering it, triggering it. So, I guess two hundred was fine. It was kind of visible, also, you know. So yeah. If someone is calling for it again, again, it's just going to show up like that. I mean, it has. Okay, one second. We can fix this thing. We have a transition on this thing, right? Transition 150 milliseconds. We can uh, decrease the tra transition time to something like maybe 50 milliseconds. So the transition is going to be faster now. Okay, seems good. Double click to uh, for the for like for display. Double click to no display. Double click for display. Out of full display. Theta mode. Display back function. Go back full mode. Okay, we are actually officially done with this thing. I guess we have a few options more to be added yet. So the options are going to be like you know. We are not. We are going to receive this video from our server itself, right? So let's do one thing. In the next video, first of all, we're gonna uh, add a new option for the, on the upload video section. That's going to be, you know. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just think about this thing. So that is exactly actually going to be, you know, uh, we will uh, add previews in our video in the back end, like we are doing here. I'll just show you how we do that. And I was thinking, you know, we should show the user what we are doing currently, like generating preview stuff. So user will get a quite a bit idea, like what is actually happening in the backend. I mean, that should be kind of cool, right? So what we can do is basically 
I was thinking of making some like a kind of like a wait list stuff like that. So probably what's going to happen is it's going to call on a or an API again and again and again, and uh, we'll already close the connection with the server uploading system. So you can do something like that. Okay. Well, that's going to be the best thing we can do. So I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day.